Welcome to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I was out a little late last night. How long? How long have you been here? Sorry. I've been here since Saturday, and it is Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Um, the best part of the thing. So I have a I have a whole thing about not partying the first day that I'm. But my first day was Saturday, so I've been partying since Sunday, and that was the party. Yeah, you were at a concert, right? Yeah, we were at um when we were young, Big mm-hmm. Ghost Energy Sweat Festival. It was a work event. Mm-hmm. It was a, for the IRS. It was a work event. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, no, people come in early, so we've been uh, we've been commiserating mm-hmm. in the industry all week. But uh, I really been looking forward to this podcast. This is one of three today. We're kicking off with uh, Nutri Media TK. This is one of my favorite podcasts we've done. So, well, Taylor Knox number two. What's good, guys? Thanks for having me. Uh, I was talking to Max last night about our Arnold Expo, and we do a lot of we do a lot of um, podcasts. Like we do one a week at this point. We're at like in the one twenty sound, but like the one that we did for me was like a turning point for us. Like there was like style and just like the way that I looked at our own podcast. So, um, seriously, thanks for being part of that. We're very excited by this. Yeah, thanks for having me back. I've been. Both of us kind of from that podcast took some things back to our HQs and kind of re brainstormed it. We're like, oh, now we need to be yeah. we need to guess this way and this this way. And mm-hmm. I think both of us have kind of like taken on a different trajectory since we started. Yeah, it, it works. So, it's, but yeah, when you talk about your craft and everything, and your craft is fantastic, and some of these can you may have designed some of them. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. oh, really? I just I just went to the cast station for oh. so a drink. Just the old big bits. I like when you show off your stuff. Well, either way, like, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of people contacting you, contacting us, and everything. So it's been great. That was only early March. So what has it been like? Six, seven months? Now? It's, so. it's been a it's been a long six, seven months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been a roller coaster year for us. So I know it's been a book for you, uh, yeah. but it's been a roller coaster year. It's been a great year. Tons of growth, um, just all around from everyone, from clients to individuals. Uh, to our business, to our businesses that we, uh, you know, people we help and people that work with us and you guys. I just think so much collaborative work has happened in the past year. It's almost like we've, we've done like five years in one. It's not even over yet. That's kind of crazy. We didn't even hit Black Friday yet. So, For, that was <laughs> <laughs> so I know you do like the collaborative work, basically the nature of what you do is collaborative. It's very similar for us. And that was like a thing that I realized during that podcast was like, we talk to a lot of people, but we have an incredibly unique business that like no one ever can relate to. And like in our in our conversations, like we were like relating on so many things that from then on, I mean, we basically have a resident we have a, an editor in your office. That, like, yeah, like shout out to Eduardo, like saved my ass on like like a daily basis, like comes in clutch. Um, but Max has started traveling with us and, and it's just been, it's been really cool to kind of like wake up with you guys the whole time. Yeah. It's opened some doors for us for, for new clients that work with you guys and then vice versa. Um, it just makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, I was I mean, you here today then. I, I, I guess we should see what, what is different since March. I'm not sure what our whole, What's, what the, the big topic is, but it's not different is my need for caffeine. So I have to get a bigger can right now. All right. So. Um, you have some. I want some, you guys to have your first picks because I've had all of these. Yeah, uh, I'm an SBK guy. Red. Okay. Um, Go Sour Patch Kids. Red Berry. I have. I haven't had this one. I haven't had the Lonnie. Which I don't want to crack that. I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, I want to crack it before cup. I actually haven't been drinking energy drinks lately. Like I completely abstained from them for like the past month and a half. Two months. Oh really? Yeah. I've been drinking natural. Energy. Have you been? Have you been drinking less caffeine in general? Or yeah. Yeah, just in general, I've just kind of been trying to cleanse everything. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, uh, I got the SDK. I'm gonna get. I guess I'm going white, white monster. I'm really trying not to drink that one. Oh well, everyone always talks about it. I've had like one in my life. Oh, uh, it's a classic. I do want to yeah. talk about that a little bit. Oh, yeah, I think it's on that goal. And and so yeah, the, I know the one I'm not gonna do is Mos- the monster range. So that's that's it. But man, no one pick a Swedish fish though. That hurts. And then we yeah, we need to need to try Kim's Alani new here. Just give it a sip. I just came aid. I thought I said Kim Rowe for a second. Kim aid, and it's weird. Yeah, I've been kind of just like trying to steer clear for all my devices for a little bit. Nice. Little so bit. when we were when we were at the um, at the Arnold last, I was actually down to about 150 milligrams of caffeine per day. I was basically I was able to go 100 if I needed to, and I was basically ready to get off. And then I decided. Life is better with caffeine. <laughs> like, it's kind of our business, but going uh, back in, I understand. 
I understand why you might want to get off of it, why some people definitely need to ease off of it. But at the end of the day, for me, it's performance enhancer and life's more fun with it. So it, I, I allow it to be like my one hook and I know how to get off if I need to. So anyway, shoot to Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I, I love the culture of the energy drinks. I love them. I love everything about them. And it's something I'm really, really looking forward to uh, getting more involved in. Uh, we are doing our, you know, our booth this year at Supply Side. So this is the first time we've ever done any really type of event for Nature Media. Um, and we were supposed to do an energy drink. We have an energy drink uh, that was going to launch here, but it's like lost in transit on the way here. It's not lost, but it's uh, it's back at the canner being sleeved right now. Oh. And they had some uh, issues with their sleeving line uh, and the sleeves that we made that complicated basically getting them on the can. It was, I can talk more in depth about the technical part about mm, why sorry, these are so awesome. Uh, but so they're a little delayed. So, so he's pointing at, at Sour Patch Kids Redberry Ghost Energy, why those are so awesome. Right, they're sleeves. Everything else here is kind of a uh, print on can, which we did a print on can earlier this year, which I got to learn the difference between the two, uh, like like how, sorry, how technically different they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the cost involved and the process involved are just completely different. So I guess there's reasons you would pick either one as well, like strategically, like, yeah, like, like the, yeah, the economies of them are very different. Yeah. When we were up at Jocko, um, shout out to Brian Littlefield, who did a podcast that I remember we were talking about city cans versus printed cans. Mm -hmm. And, uh, in 2020, there was a aluminum shortage. Uh -huh. uh, and so people were buying up cans like crazy. So they bought up like all the cans they could find in America and printed them all. Mm -hmm. And then like six months later, like, they didn't want to use the flavors that were printed on the cans, so they yeah. put sleeves over the prints. Yeah. Right? Like there's, there's, there's a lot of versatility to this, but I'm sure you're going to talk about like the experience that's the difference between the two of them. Yeah. So, I guess my question re real quick, or not real quick, but what was the plan for this? So Supply Side West, this is a big convention here in Las Vegas where we have basically the whole supply chain comes here, whether you're selling tablet presses, flavoring, or ingredients, and we're always here to talk about ingredients, but there's a lot more as machinery. And then of course, energy drinks and blown up and everything. So what were you planning on doing here? And I'm sure you're still gonna do of business, but like- Yeah, what we, was the, what was the we don't really plan? need to have a booth here. Like it's not a requirement. <laughs> uh, last year, our friends at Veridicor got a booth and then they basically called me and they're like, hey, do you wanna share half of our booth with us? We already paid for it. And I was like, uh, yeah, well, sure. So um, basically the deal was that we kind of helped them do all of their marketing of their booth, set things up for them. And uh, they gave us basically the other half. So it's like we got a booth, you know, for free. So why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, so the point, work. right. And, and we do a lot of collaborative work with lots of different manufacturers, right? We've got our friends over at Nutribound. Um, there's several different manufacturers that we work with on a daily basis, all the big ones, the same ones that y'all work with, with other clients. And if we have the opportunity to, We'll go and make content with them because you know, why not? We got Max. We just follow around with the camera. It's good for their businesses. It's good for our business. It's good for educating our, our clients. So my audiences are all basically y'all's clients and my clients. I mean, mm -hmm. my audience on all my social medias is just, we talked about this last time, we're all business owners. So even though it's a small sort of very niche network of people, whenever I put something out, like all the biggest names in our industry would watch it. And I think that's pretty cool. Just like they all watch awesome. it. Yeah. So uh, when we, we work with the manufacturer, it's cool that we can sort of like, you know, enter their space and sort of kind of give a behind the scenes look on it, at least from our, you know, angle and our vantage point. So uh, Austin from MacroCap, he like hit me up in my DMs and was just like, yo, how can we get a cool video for MacroCap? And I was like, uh, I don't know, okay, I guess we gotta go to wherever you're at and we're in Florida. And I was like, okay. So I got on a Zoom call with Austin and I was like, hey, I got this idea. We're gonna be at Supply Side West. And you know, they're a large energy drink beverage maker. So, all right, well, I wouldn't say large, but they're up and coming, they're growing. Right, they make rays, right? They make rays, yeah. And they make a few other pretty big <laughs> names out there. Um, but they're they're growing. And they, uh, they've they got a nice little operation over there. And uh, I was like, hey, I don't really know much about macro caps, but I'll tell you this, we're gonna be at Supply Side West. So if you want to just throw it out there, you know, run a few pallets of uh, some flavor, you know, cause they do a lot of flavor testing. 
and they have a whole uh, flavor testing uh, like affiliate program where they send out uh, like thousands of these like mystery flavors and then they get people to vote back on them on what they, mm -hmm. they think about them. They're unmarked. Like they don't, Super cool. okay. they don't say what the flavor is. So they're like, well, we're going to be doing a run. Uh, so we can just sleeve them with your own artwork. And so we made a sleeve with uh, basically a how to make an energy drink. And uh, I wish I could show that here, but it's, it's basically this artwork that we have here on our on video. Store. We could we can show it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put some people okay. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So we made a sleeve of, of uh, with the, our artwork and our branding that we kind of rebranded with, and then we uh, and the, instead of on the, the the side panel where you put all of why this product is great, blah blah blah, you know, a description and icons and things, we put like icons of like how the process of how you make an energy drink. And so the idea was that we were just going to pass them out for free. Uh, and so we did. We got a couple pallets made, and they're like in Mesa, Arizona, right now. So. Uh, the printer was going to print them and literally drive them here this morning, but he is like, I have absolutely overwhelmed this poor man in his business like the past like three weeks between us and other agencies and a few other brands that he, he does. He just, uh, he's got so much going on. So he was like, look, I might make it, I might not. Um, but one thing's for certain, like we're going to get them done and they'll be shipped to Olympia. So it'll be at Olympia no matter what. So I really wanted them here in time for this, but really the snafu was the sleeves themselves. And what we, we try to do a little too much. We try to basically do what, what Ghost does, but we try to do it on a more economical level. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all new technologies because this particular printer is uh, using, uh, he uses a different technology in order to, to print on the cans. or well, not on the cans, but on the sleeves. So. It's, it's trying to get similar features and te technology that's used in like the ghost sleeves. And we're trying to basically get them so that we can make them that people can enter doing it a lot less costly because this is actually incredibly costly to do. Yeah. So what are you willing to say? What specifically yeah. is the part? Yeah. 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 So, so like what, what on this ghost sleeve is the, so the, the sleeve thing that got you, the ghost right? sleeves are, they're really pretty genius. Like, um, they're genius. <laughs> well, not just the artwork. I'm saying like how this works. So the issue is, is, is so the ghost sleeves are one of the only sleeves, sorry, that have a lot of different embellishments on them, right? So they have, it's a gloss sleeve, but they have this thing called spot sandpaper. And then they knock out from the, the, sop, sop, the sorry, the spot sandpaper. So the spot sandpaper is kind of that matted sort of area. And then knockout means um, the, the, there is no uh, plating there. So like it, it, it passes through to the substrate of this thing. So in this case, it's just yellow ink on the SPK. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you get this sort of glossing and, and sort of matted sort of texture, like dynamic of like two tone. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have the doming on top of that, obviously of the, uh, the ghost lettering there. So doming is specific only to a few printers in the US that can actually like do that on a flexographic print and that type of fidelity. Um, if you ever feel a ghost cam, people say, well, it feels good. It has all these textures. It's multi-textured. And the same thing with their uh, labels. And that's because that how they get these printed are on specific machines that have been like retrofitted and the IP on them is very safely guarded. And it's, uh, it's very difficult to do. Now, the issue with Flexo is with Flexo, it costs a lot of money to set up and a lot of time and you have to do a lot of volume. So that basically takes out like 90%, you know, I hate percentage stuff, I say that all the time, but you like the vast majority of clients that may want to get into doing cans, even at smaller runs or shrinks, um, the vast majority of them basically can't meet the volume or the technical specs in order to get this ha to happen just because it just it costs so much money. That's one thing. The second thing is the sleeving. So these things run on these machines that operate really, really quickly, right? And at a canner, at a filler, they want to run at maximum efficiency. They want to operate at maximum capacity, you know, as many as they can get out. You have to slow these machines down really slow when you put these embellishments on these uh, sleeves. You have to slow it down because it takes longer to put in there. It takes longer to heat up. And also the banding where it seems at right here, where it glues together, it has to have enough like tension in there so that it shrinks on here nicely. 
but not too much where the, the hard elements like the doming basically create the silver can't stretch enough so it doesn't glue well so it pops off. So on these ghost cans, the way that they designed it, it leaves enough stretch so that they can shrink on here. Mm -hmm. And then it's very specific to those, where those elements, where there's gloss and where there's not, and where there's doming and where there's not, to allow it to go on this. So you can tell they did a ton of testing in order to get this. This one, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, we yeah. call them genius. I don't, I don't disagree that teams are geniuses, but it's also, they've made these mistakes. You know, right? Well, they did, it, they did it, they did it quietly and they did it, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, you never see it. When they come out, everything's perfect. And when I do stuff, we have to do the process and a part of our business is sort of make it sort of kind of public in, in a way, because yeah. it's a process uh, so that we can kind of help teach other people. So that was an issue that we did with our cans. And I was like, yeah, let's go over the top with all the cool stuff. And it, um, it makes it really hard for that sleever to come down and to shrink everything down and then glue it up. So it was basically hopping at this band. So we need a, we have to go back and redesign it slightly. Was it, they were popping off the can completely? No, so the sleeve comes down and then it goes through like a heat tunnel mm -hmm. and then it gets glued and then it shrinks down and gets glued up from that heat tunnel. So there's a seam on the, sh on the shrinks on the back here. And if there's not enough glue here, uh, if there's too much like rigidity, it, it doesn't like glue up nicely. So then it kind of just kind of separates down mm -hmm. here. So they're on the bottom, they would separate. Okay, so so you 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 gambled, you got greedy, let's just say, and it would have been super cool. It didn't work out, but you ended up getting something printed, right? That's like yeah, no, we ended up making the tweaks. It's fine. It just it just took a lot longer. Right. Okay. So, but now you've learned a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. and like, so was it that bad? It was probably a worthwhile learning lesson. We might not have cans today here at Supply Side West, but now you right. do. You, Right. Like how much have you learned with this process? That's right. So, I mean, anything in printing labels, the problem that mostly everyone has is in order to print something, it costs money because it costs materials and it costs labor. And no printer is willing to <laughs> stick their neck out and stop their lines of printing money in order to just, you know, help you out, you know? So, like, every single run is basically a test, but every single run is also production. You pay for it. Mm -hmm. Can I ask? So, like in manufacturing facilities, most people have like mini bee blenders on the side of this work. Yes. Right. So like for, for just for reference, right. what you're saying right now, this whole testing thing, like that's everything in this industry. Uh -huh. And I think we take this for granted that like when you go to Riticor, they're going to be able to blend your pre-workout in the first try, most likely. Right. Right. Um, there's a product that's out this year um, from, I'll say it's Ghost. That they came out with and like Ghost is like, they're like, the, they're the geniuses. Like we like to give them a lot of credit. Yeah. Um, but they had a very popular pre-workout launch last weekend as a big collab that they spent months trying to dial in getting the scoop to test that. Like even the guys at the best, like there's a lot of stuff you have to figure out over here and there. And so this, this stuff, it, it is kind of part of the process, but now you know this, and that's a skill set that is incredibly valuable for you. Yeah. Right. It's how you use that going forward. It's, there's a reason that mm -hmm. Armada is known for what they're known, yeah. that Nutribout is known for what they're known. Like it's, it's a skill that you have, like McDowell. Great example, yeah. right? Yeah. So it, it, it's all things like to your point that yeah. now he can he can yeah. sell. I'm very sad that we don't get to see it like today, but at, like long term, you'll get it. You'll, you'll get it. It'll be here well, early. Like if it's not here later today, it'll be oh, like the next two days. We're fine. Well, okay, we still have it right here. We still have it right here. Oh, that's cool. yeah, that's totally yeah, cool. They're all done. they're gonna see me roll anyway. So yeah, right. and, and honestly, I I ship like maybe. 12 boxes of stuff that we've done over the course of the past year and only like three of them showed up. So at my booth right now, I only have like three boxes full of examples of our work and mm -hmm. we have more that's just like trickling in throughout the day. So I'm just shipping this, this, print, this printing it's gentleman, hard. just have him drink a few of them and get his, get in the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, so that's all. We're going to, they're going to keep some over there just for their crew. Yeah. That's awesome. It, this printing guy that, that like it was held up and stuff. Like, so, like, so going like back to guy. all that, like, the, the printing game usually costs money. Yep. Um, and, it, and it takes a lot of time too. See, that's the thing is this, what Ghost does, what all these major brands do, and what I learned from Print on Can is it is it, it it's not a game that most most of these industry brands can play because it's so expensive and it takes so long. And everyone wants to do things really fast and they want to do things really cheap. So what we're basically trying to do is make it more economical and find a way to streamline those processes and bring the cost down so that we can elevate basically the uh, the quality, but have like a basically lower barrier rate. It's true. I just think it's gonna be a lot better for our business in order to do that. 
And the barrier to entry, even without all these things, if you like, you just, if you just went to a drink manufacturer and just wanted their private label, even that, the minimum, the minimum order is insane still. Yeah. So like there's, the, you guys are making, would democratizing this be like the proper way to say this? Like you're making it accessible for people that want to be able to do it the way that we're used to seeing now. Right. And it, it's still, it's still a volume game. They still yeah. need to come in with volume, but like, let's say they want to, they want a do, so I have a client that wants to do energy drinks. And they're going to come in at a, you know, a minimum order or whatever, which is still more than most people probably think. Um, in order to do like an embellished sleeve, usually they'd be like, we need millions and millions and we need months and months. And it's going to cost, you know, several thousand dollars, maybe, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 in testing in order to get this stuff right before you run production. And what I'm trying to do is figure all that stuff out on the back end with the printer so we know going into it. They don't have to pay all that money in order to, you know, mm -hmm. screw stuff up. Now that's that's part of the process. Is you're gonna like you're gonna pay a little bit of money to screw stuff up. That's a part of what mm -hmm. we do. But we're trying to alleviate all those like major pangs. So when we go into bigger clients, like we can say, hey, this is why we design around this very specific way and with these specific technologies, and this is the cost involved with them, and this is the time it takes to do it, and this is what the process is like to do it. All because we've done this now several times. And I don't want you to go and spend, you know, a quarter million of a dollar, quarter million dollars, uh, you know, on throwing crap at a wall to see if it sticks. Because now you already know that some of these things you can't do and some of these things you can do. You know the parameters of them. Awesome. So if I came to you now <laughs> I, and I bet in mind you want the price, but we want to make a ghost knockoff can, mm -hmm. which there's a lot of people who make a lot of ghost yeah. knockoff yeah. stuff. So yeah. Like, yeah. not too yeah. Yeah. online. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so like we wanna we wanna knock this can up. I'm holding Swedish fish. This is this is obviously different, but what? Um, yeah. So what? Um, how much of this would are you now able to do at a lower cost? Are you are you confident? We're pretty close to, and I'm not saying knock off. Like it's just what that they've done from a print technology standpoint mm -hmm. is super impressive. I think everyone loves everything about what this brand does, and it, this kind of goes back to one of those tip reels that I did where I was kind of talking about the difference between like what is premium and it, it really, you know, the artwork's cool. Um, but there's a lot that happens technically in the, in the finishes and the way that you make certain selections of things that really give it, it's like experiential yeah. full package. And that's really just what we're trying to figure out is like, how do we also incorporate these elements into the packaging in a way that's economical? I don't want to knock off ghost. I think what they do is their thing. Right. I just want to find a way to like use technology so we can offer similar things to other brands so they have more options to do those like elevated experiences. I think like well, like something that people probably would need to understand from our perspective, typically most of the time when we talk about knockoffs of brands, it's like quite literally like caught in uh, <laughs> Well, I hear that a lot. I was making a joke because well, everyone's well, trying to quickly. No, no, I have, I've had to like, literally like fire like two or three clients in the past couple months because they keep pushing me to try and like yeah do ghost well, you know so just like i keep on trying to steer them away from it i'm like look, why would i do that why would i you know i can't make something and then put it out there publicly that i was a part of it if it's like there's nothing about what they're branding that i can't technically do right I'm like an artwork standboard but why would i completely rip off because it's all about what's the, right. what's the word what's what's the word ben? authenticity <laughs> Yeah, Max, you start counting the amount of times that that comes up in the next <laughs> But, but my, my point of bringing that up kind of is though, like um, people might not realize from a packaging perspective, like it might look like people are copying or offering to copy these things because when you talk to these manufacturers, like the only thing that you can do is offer examples, is offer like literally a sample of what the capability is. And the capability with the demonstrative most often will be showing you this label, hey, we can do this. And it sounds like they're offering for you to copy it. It's not, but this is like, you can take this thing and then put your watermark as it, right? And it, it, sometimes it looks like when you like order uh, sleeves for a manufacturer or homo goods, they'll send you everyone else's shaker bottle. And it looks like they're like, hey, copies. It's not, it's just demonstrating the yeah, capability. Right, exactly. And that, that's a very important point, but not all clients we understand that and you have to really kind of educate and talk them through and that goes back to like branding as a whole that's how we do like brand therapy we really talk about like what are the value systems yeah 
Um, this but, is a machine that, that your brand book can run through. But there are, and, and I'm trying to get away from this. I'm trying to get into like a better sort of legal clientele where they realize that there is a process in order to create a truly like authentic brand based off of your value systems and uh, their specific strategies and sales strategies and channels. Um, but that's not everyone. And, you know, I get a little bit of everyone, you know, so pe everyone's always sending me their buddy or their friend or, you know, their cousin or something. We may have done good, good work for one person or one brand that's really big, and they may have somebody that's in their network and like, hey, can you? And sometimes I'm just doing brands just kind of like for, for like buddy work. Yeah. Honestly. You got to have a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then uh, most of the time when that happens, it's always like, hey, I want to, you know, try and replicate this other thing, try and replicate. And then I'm trying to steer them away from them. But, you know, this goes back to like time and money thing. There are some people who don't have the time and the money. Like Ghost takes the time and they take the money. All these big major brands, they understand these are huge capital investments and they work a year on their R&D. But I've got other people who want things literally in four weeks. So like you have to like find a way to get them to try and want the, the one year turnaround quality and try and pack it into four months. Or you have to try and educate them along the way and hopefully they don't get all pissed off at you and think that you're just trying to, you know, overcharge them or take them too long. But when someone asks for four weeks, do you do you even give them a huge price tag or just like you just want to deal with it? No, our price that's the thing about intermediate is the price is the same for everybody. Oh no. If it's four weeks. <laughs> yeah, we we talk by time. So yeah. like, you know, if somebody comes and they want like this, you know, they want the home run. They see some of the brands that we've worked with, you know, become major brands a lot of them were already big brands we're just now helping them like you know right yeah uh, we're help we're help helping their machine pretty much be more efficient and, and create efficiencies like we're talking yep. about we're trying to help them get the cooler stuff for cheaper for faster for for higher quality like yeah. we're, we're that's what we're trying to hit um well like they're they're um i don't want to say process property they're they're um benefiting off of the mistakes that you've made oh uh, yeah and that's that's fine yeah. Honestly, the reason that you can do things in four weeks is because it's taken you 16 weeks before yeah. you've made all the mistakes. And now you know if you have to do it in four weeks, this is what you do. What I would probably elect to say, I don't know if you want to say it, but the people who want things in four weeks are not the clients that you probably That's have. kind of where I've, that's okay. I'm getting to. Some of them, again, they're kind of like buddy deals, so they come sort of attached to something. So I kind of, you know, do it. Uh, but most of the time, I just very kindly try and like explain the process and reiterate and reiterate and reiterate. But not everyone always, you know, sometimes they're just like, hey, you guys are just like designers, you just label guys, um, which that's that's fine. That is kind of sort of what we are. But um, long term, we'll probably end up culling a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, and it's already starting to happen. So we're starting to kind of get into this sort of new league of clients that really understand that, who are willing to pay for that, that know that it takes time and really want to get into the process. And it's letting us get better at our procedures, but they're still, you know, you know, on a daily basis to fill the gaps of the major projects that we're doing. There's people who kind of, you know, want it now, want it fast, just need something because they're trying to get something to the market. A lot of these are like manufacturers that literally just have these runs and they don't have, there's brand owners that like, you know, they're doing smaller runs and they're just trying to get the job done and they don't have a label person. So they're like, hey, TK, I got this guy and he's, you know, they just need a label for their bottle bottle. They just need a label. Yeah. That's and I've probably got like 20 of those going on at one time. And, you know, they maybe only run like a couple hundred units or something like that. Um, That's where you bring in the interns though, right? For the most part. Yeah. Yeah. But these are the people that honestly get the most frustrated at like the process because they think this is quick. This is easy. This is cheap. This is all these things. And I'm like, well, the problem is, is you're referencing all these other things, these really large brands that are doing multi millions of dollars. I'm trying to tell you how they got there is a lot more long and arduous process than what you think just sending TK because everyone told you that I'm the label guy, that I'm just going to do it in four weeks. And same thing on the label printing side. Like, like again, like that costs money and takes time too. And luckily we have some pretty good print partners now that are working with us like our sleeves. We're not paying for them. It's, it's a collaborative effort where for our energy drink, like we're we are putting in the money all together in order to get it right. And we've thrown away thousands and thousands of sleeves trying to test them to get them right. This is the equivalent of people who ask us just for flavor video. I think it's going to happen to what happened with Ghost. <laughs> like, like, right. like I, I, this, yes. I mean, but there's so yeah. many parallels that I, I, I hear what you're saying. Like, I'm not saying that we're neutral media or anything, but I understand like having to call that, like, mm -hmm. 
Bet, just make a video. Come on. Yeah, just make a video. Make a video. And, mm -hmm. and, and hopefully they get 50,000 views because you just talk about a flavor. Like, they don't want to do what... If, they, if for us, it's giving us the capability, giving us an exclusive, interesting thing, a widget of some sort, and then letting me do the creative video with it. And most often, the creative video is not, hi, here's this pre-workout. This is what I thought about. It. It's usually something a little bit more it's, out it's, a, it's like a thought out package because like a lot of these brands in order to stay relevant like in y'all's sort of new cycle you gotta constantly have things to talk about yep. so uh it, like they have to have new drops new ingredients that are interesting just new things happening about their brand all the time they give you you know content in order to talk about and so that's yep. a lot more than just like hey i'm gonna pay you some money or hey here's my thing talk about it like, yeah uh, it's it's a lot more strategic than that and what people don't realize is like social media wise like I don't necessarily need the newest ingredient or something mm -hmm. if you'll let me be creative. Yeah, and, and it, exactly. And it's infrastructure and network. That's a big one too. Yeah. So like when people come into our fold, for example, I'm going to open you new doors to a whole bunch of people that are going to give you new capabilities at new pricing that you probably weren't going to be able to get beforehand. And like, I'm not necessarily charging anyone extra money. Give, that, that, that I'm giving that as a part as a, a, a bonus for, for doing stuff with us. And like sometimes though, like there's parameters to it. It's like, um, yeah, I can get this done, but like you want it done in two weeks, but you're only ordering this much. Like, I don't think you understand. I'm gonna drop this call and I'm gonna pick up one in, in 30 minutes and this guy's gonna order 10 X what you're ordering. And you want me to call a label printer? You want me to convince him to do yours over that one? Easy. Um, like it's, it's just business. He's gonna prioritize the larger order. That's a bigger client that has more prestige. It's gonna bring in more business over the next the next 12 months. And you were like shouting at me to try and get this done in seven days when I very, very, you know, calmly and directly told you this is like a, you know, six to eight week process. I like <laughs> the fact that you mentioned that Lisa, someone would <clears throat> shout at you about it or any, like, for me, like I can usually off like the first conversation know how the whole relationship is going to be like the way that people treat small things. Yeah. They usually can tell very far, like how the whole thing is turned out. Yeah. Like if somebody like hits me in a DM and the first thing they ask me now is like, how much? It's like, that's, I just didn't worry that way. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, well, a lot of people like coming from someone who wants to like, but I'm going to say wants to clone ghost. A lot of people just see the success, the financial success mm -hmm. and they want it. For me, I go straight to the label. This is like the least sexy part of this can. There's nothing on it. So like I go straight to the label. A lot of like a business copycat, they just see dollar signs a lot of times. But I honestly didn't even realize until like actually evolving this that these fish scales and the Swedish fish are like bumped up and stuff. Like yeah. that is the experience. So different people see different things. And you want to be working with the people who see the right things, who actually get it and actually like want the authenticity of the fish <laughs> of the fish you know, point, so. there are a lot of moving pieces and, and this is not just cans but at all of you know making any sort of cpg product or there's a difference between a nutritional facts panel and a supplement facts panel you have to triangulate this information to whoever the co-manufacturer is and so their ability to communicate is almost paramount so as a brand owner you're almost like a middleman for communication you're almost like a, a, a project coordinator mm -hmm. and if you can't be good at that which you know, we have a lot of clients who are just like, oh, we're paying you, so you do everything. I'm like, well, I, if I don't have a relationship with your manufacturer or whoever your co-man is who's making whatever it is that you're making, and they're not able to provide me with the right specs on things, then like, this is going to be uh, a bumpy ride because like now I have to go and fish it all up. And if you're going to have, to, you know, if I have to spend a lot of time doing that, then I'm going to charge you for that. And they don't understand that. They yeah. seem to yeah. get that. Like we when you put trademark ingredients and stuff, it really complicates it. The, the, the yeah. product, the just the process of the, there are rules to putting that type mm -hmm. of stuff on on it. Well, for the good companies, there are. Like, <laughs> yeah, the, the, their their IP, their licenses, like yeah, like, like yeah. Well, I, <clears throat> since like last talking to you guys, I've kind of like changed my my protocol for that. It's like I need to see signed agreement. Yeah, we had a heated conversation last night with a certain ingredient provider who kept saying like, "I don't see all the TLS. I don't see all the TLS." My answer was like. Don't tell me that. Yeah. That's not a good thing. So remember I told you last time, I was like, there's a spectrum of like, yeah. there's like good players who have things by the book who are like some of them who are like overly, you know, anal about it. And there's some like where it's just like, it doesn't even exist. I have to go and like find their logo on the internet yeah. and literally go and trace <laughs> it like as a JPEG just to get it so the customer that's, has yeah. it. So like, that's not good either. So, JPEG is, yeah. That, yeah, and it so, takes a long time to do that, to make it look good again. And it's like, I'm trying to make your brand look good on someone else's packaging because they're paying for your ingredient and you couldn't even 
Yeah. Like, they don't want to get a TLA signed because they don't know how to do it. And you're not providing it. So it's I become some sort of weird consultant for yeah. these things where it's like, that shouldn't be my role at all. That's what I'm saying. Like going back to the co-man side, like usually that stuff is provided via co-man mm -hmm. on a lot of cases, but um, not all of them really have the same process and protocol. So like I'm having to sort of like constantly pivot based off of who I'm working with and who they're working with. And so I've been trying to create, I'm trying to tell you, tell you about this is like, I'm trying to create some sort of protocol to make this step by step. So it's like the right way. The problem is, is all that stuff costs time and money and people don't always want to pay me for that time. I think we should work together on that. I know this is something we said in the, at the Arnold. We've done a lot of things together. This is one of the fall through the cracks. I'd like to yeah. work on it. But what I was bringing up, which is funny, and I don't, I don't know if you know this, but um, on the back of the can that is going to be featured at Supply Side West, um, one of the steps is regulatory review. Uh, your personal emails on the back of it. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> it was too late when I found out. It was already printed, and I didn't want to tell you to stress you out, but just, just so you know, you're from your actual, your, like, you didn't give him, like, a separate email or anything, like, just so you know, every single person in supply side can have your email. That's hilarious. Well, it's, it's great. It's, it's not part of your business. It's awesome. But it's hard to guess. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say contact the price all the time, guess it ends up in my inbox anyway, but, but that's hilarious. So, yeah, we, I, I didn't know you finalized on that. We looked at the label, did a small, like, review. I found, like, a parenthesis that was off, or nothing crazy, though, but it looked really good. We'll take some. And then, <laughs> hey, I'm like, right, right well. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, I'm like, I, I was a computer programmer and I, we, I still do. You know, right, sure. If that parentheses will mess you up. So yeah. <laughs> I find them immediately. Um, no, so yeah, we talked, we joked about, yeah, contact price law for regulatory review. I didn't, honestly, I didn't see the final product. So yeah. Thank uh, you. Well, <laughs> you, you, what you saw was really the difference was is we just added that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's so scary. really, yeah, the, the, the good, the right protocol would be if you guys were, you know, let's say contracted in this, in this, uh, situation would be send you guys off for final review and you guys do like the final, final, final. And there's, there's what we call a chain of custody where there is like in writing, you know, somebody says who has the authority says this is the final. So there's, there's lots of proofing that goes on in during the process of doing artworks for these and like who it is, who basically signs off on these essentially takes on the liability if yeah. there's yeah. a mistake. So um, I didn't send that over to you for the last one. Um, technically, the co-man was like, did the final, final, final. Gotcha. So I, 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 I would personally want to be a little bit earlier involved just because um, some of the things that we capture cannot be designed. You actually wouldn't make this mistake, but I did a, I did a label review for NMB Nutrition, um, who we consult with and stuff. And so this was the first time one of their ingredients, this particular ingredient was in an energy drink can. Mm -hmm. And so I did a late review and I was like, there's no trademark call out for you guys here. Like mm -hmm. you should be saying that XYZ is a registered trademark of NMB nutrition. Yep. And so I'm like, you gotta try pushing this. And I thought I saw a spot where there was some room, but as a designer, you're probably like, no, there's no room there. Well, um, it just depends on point font and like outside. And outside. Okay, well, yeah. and so they yeah. said it was too late that they couldn't change it or there's enough room. So I was. Personally, for me, I was kind of upset for NMB Nutrition, but yeah. had I been involved a little bit earlier, then I, I think we would have captured that, but they said it was too close to print and everything, so they wouldn't do it, but maybe the next round. I was, I, I, I personally, for them, wasn't wasn't totally thrilled because um, it could have been better. So just, we, just knowing you and like your personality, and you're like, you're, you, you have hyper attention to detail, which would make you really good at this. <laughs> but also knowing the sort of, the operational side, mm -hmm. I don't, it's like, do you really want that smoke? Because yeah. like these dudes push and push and push and push for you to get this stuff done. And it's all times a day. It doesn't matter the time. And um, there could be a whole list of things that are going wrong and you know it. Mm -hmm. And there may be variables that are completely out of your control in order to be able to fix. But they want that thing to print tomorrow. They want it shipped by Friday. By hell or high water. Yeah, yeah. And you were already pulling <laughs> right. all the strings yeah. on the production side to get that to happen. Yeah. So like there, yes, there is a balance to it and there is a process to it. And at the end of the day, it's really about like, who's going to be accountable, who is liable because this is going to ultimately cost money. So mm -hmm. like, this is where it gets really tricky when you have somebody really pushing you to do things when you knowingly know that it's wrong. But like, at the end of the day, like it's your product, just trying to get it to, to out the door. And the, the co-man, in some cases, they're just like, run it, dude. Yeah. Production, Monday, like, yeah. the labels here. 
Yeah, you know, and I'm like, well, there's this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and I could be super anal about that. And they're just like, yeah, we do do the processes and the steps and the back and forth, but just sometimes, sometimes little things happen. Like to that. me, the, okay, yeah, so I mean, two separate comments. I guess for the, this NMB thing, like, it was the first time this agreement was being used to cancel. I was like, all right, I'm yeah. pushing through, but yeah. not happy. But then, um, what when you're, what's that? They want that PO. Like, yeah. they, like, like, you know, that's what it comes down to sometimes. Like, Don't get my greedy kick out of this product because you're yeah. being crazy, you know? So yeah. I get that too. Yeah. But um, well, what you're talking about is like with the operation stuff, there's a lot, of, if you're if you're talking about bringing in more people, mm -hmm. you need like, I mean, you have project managers and stuff, but you need like the ultimate goat herder here. Like we just yeah. like, can do everything. And that should be the brand, shouldn't it? Probably not her for this particular, like, like in this case, I would use an outside consultant like you if you want it to truly, but if you had a protocol of step-by-step -step process and who signs off on what, when, and then like basically attaches deadlines for whose balls in what court for what action. And then there needs to be certain people that are responsible for very specific things. Because like we mostly look at like the plating and the artwork, the embellishments and stuff. What's on the back of the can and the nutritional facts panel, most of that stuff should be provided by somebody and I should be able to just copy and paste that verbatim. But the problem is, at least in our case, that's not always true. The big brands, for the most part, provide that stuff for me because they realize that our deal in this is made it look cool. But that's not everyone. So then I have to take on a secondary role, which like going into this project, I didn't know was what I needed to do in order to like get this thing. In, in, and then I become the person that's liable, which I'm like, hey, I didn't, I didn't, I this, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> but at the end of the day, in order to get it done, since we're like basically the thing that we're think of like a hub. Everything crosses through our desk in order yeah. for the thing to happen. And we also are the technical part, not necessarily the physical part, but the technical part that has to happen on screen on a computer in order to do this. So a lot of those sign offs and proofs have to come through us in order for that to happen. So there's times where I'm like, I don't want to be liable for this because I know that you skipped five steps. But like, like at the same time, like that's why if you were wanting to get into this like little segment of, of being a proofing consultant, it's just uh, and I hope you do, because you could help me out a whole bunch of you guys do this, uh, honestly. I, I think we'd rather, instead of like, uh, you say like, become a consultant in the space, like, I think we'd rather key in with you first. Yeah. Do it with you guys. It's it's mostly the issue of liability more than anything. Mm -hmm. Look, if somebody sends labels to print, and they're printing $30,000 worth of labels, and it's your signature that, that matters, but there's some variables that are out of control, are you going to be comfortable with your signature being on that document? That's what I'm asking. My signature on someone, it's someone else's label though. Do you think they care? They might as well just not pay you that PO if something comes back and it's wrong, mm -hmm. even if they proved it or not. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. A lot of these guys, they're relying on other people so much based off of information they just simply don't know about. Right. You think every brand understands all these moving pieces. They are relying very heavily on their co man. Again, sometimes their co mans really care and they have really great processes. And some of them still have those processes and think things get messed, and some of them don't. I'll be honest, I don't really worry at all because most of these people have no clue what they're doing in the first place. They wouldn't catch if I made a mistake. And I catch so many mistakes of theirs. Like, we're talking about an enemy ingredient, like, bucked up, like, absolutely fucked up a label a <laughs> months ago. Yeah. I had to go online and call them out on it. Mm -hmm. Their CEOs with my DMs, like, uh, you know, like, when he, like, the boyfriend's caught cheating and he's, like, lying to your face. Mm -hmm. Like, you, I got the text messages. Like, that was me with this label. Like, He's, uh, I was telling him, like, NNB's hydro prime is not glycerol monastery. And he's like, my R&D guys are telling me that it is. So I'm like, I helped make a fucking ingredient. Dude. But I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's not. Like, it's factually false. Like, these companies, I, I don't know. Maybe I, I don't mean to come off pompous about it. But, like, we would be helping them so much. Yeah. And to be completely honest, the FDA has completely shown that they're not going to do anything in the, anyway. So, like, I don't feel there's any repercussions. Probably not. So that that's another thing where, like, uh, there's a lot of he said, she said. There's a lot of different discrepancy of how people interpret, like, FDA things. Yes. So, like, I'll have a, a compliance regulatory expert of one manufacturer be super hard line about some things. And then they'll another manufacturer will have a, have a compliance regulatory expert not. Yeah. Being like, I think, like, well, blah, 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 over there is like, you know, they really, you know, they insist that we do it this way. And they're like, eh, don't, don't worry about that. And I've got like third party uh, people that we pay that are like third party. They own their own consultancies that do it, like for cans, for example, like nutrition facts panels. They're very arduous and do a really great job. But sometimes they're like overly analytical on stuff where it's like, 
they go back on the parameters of risk and like high risk, low risk, low risk, high risk, high risk, ultra high risk, um, based off of like certain, you know, compliance and everything on a label usually associates with something else on that label, every single piece of copy. And so if you change one thing, it may change like 10 things. So then you gotta sit there and talk about it. It's like, all right, well, if this is high risk, we change this, what those other nine things that we need to change, what, what do we change it to now? And sometimes it's like, well, that completely just throws our whole marketing thing out of the window. All yeah. the things we wanted to say about this product, now we have to find a way to word around that, you know, like super creatine, for example. And then some people just say, eh, put it on the can, but we'll get sued later, whatever. Yeah. So like, like I said, there's a spectrum of like different people who have different uh, ways of interpreting FDA and there's yeah. different people who are willing to take on different risks. It's like, it's not up to me to have to, you know, like determine it for them. I'm just trying to, yep. at the end of the day, trying to get the big branding out, out, out to, you know. Yeah, this is a huge misunderstood thing about regulatory and dietary supplements is that it really is all interpretation of guidelines. Yes. And the way that you accomplish these things can be interpreted differently. Right. Right. And, that, and that's, that's, everything is well and fine until someone knocks on your door, whether it's a lawyer from California for that's, California. That's probably the biggest risk. Yeah. Or FDA, whatever it is, like. When they show up, you have to be able to say mm -hmm. no, and this is why, mm -hmm. and you have to explain that. It's mm -hmm. not like you know, it's not like a, like criminal law where there are categories and like you know, if you did this, it's like a, in the sense of a rubric. In some cases, yes, but for the most part of these regulatory discussions, it's interpretations of guidelines. Right. Um, and yeah, and, and there's there's a million different ways you can usually do a thing, yeah. and a lot of people just kind of copy like whoever else did. Yeah. It's like literally go to the store, buy a. a C4 can and see what they did. So C4 did. It's like <laughs> and to be. Did you call your lawyer or someone? Yeah. I need, I need confirmation from somebody, not some other company that I just bought it. Again. And and <laughs> like oddly, in in fairness and in, in some ways, like it almost makes sense because in some ways things become like standard procedures for the industry. Yeah. Because someone else did the legwork to figure it out. Right. right. Like it's like if we know it came from Mike DiMaggio, we're I was, we're pretty like well that guy is a. Uh, you know, he's a beast. Yeah, I was absolute monster. Mm -hmm. And so, like, we can be pretty uh, well assured that, like, anything that they do is going to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, when I'm doing a re review, uh, Alpha GBC is at a lot of formulas. So, I have, like, a copy paste. I'm like, here's, the, here's how the other popular brands are doing it. Yeah. The, the most important thing is that you have, like, the common name is in there. And the common name is Alpha GPC. But, like, how do you describe that? Do you have the 50% or is it 70 or any percent now or whatever? Um, but, and so I say, like, this is how Ghost does it, but like the scientific spelling could be slightly different of the full name of the of the tree. And so, yeah, but um, I give options, and it's like what whatever fits the. And like one really funny anecdote from the last year since this whole relationship's butted up is like uh, Mike helped out someone uh, that you, I think worked with you. And it's kind of like a brand that like typically I wouldn't say that we ever work with it. I don't, I'm not really a fan of like their practices, mm -hmm. um, but Mike helped clean this guy's label up. Mm -hmm. And I woke up to a DM on Instagram. Uh, Mike didn't know that this company is like someone that like I would not have wanted us to be working with mm -hmm. originally. Um, and I get to wake up to a DM from this like particular brand. I'm like, oh no, like what, what is this? DM? And thanking us for helping them because most people have no clue. Mm -hmm. And Mike gave a lot of really helpful feedback yeah. um, through another consulting gig that we have for ingredients. And the guy's whole label turned around. Yeah, and it was like this. This is a positive experience. It's yeah, really nice. I didn't need to do that. So I, it was it was from NMB Nutrition. I'll just say yeah. it. So they were like, hey Mike, what do you think of this label? And I'm like. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I normally what I should do is be like, from NMB's perspective, did you worry about these two things or it was good? Yeah. 
but they should probably contact me. But in this one, I just made a Google Doc and I just laundry listed this this like yeah. thing. Yeah. And I had never heard back from anyone. I don't even know if I got credit or anything. And it turns out it then yeah. and then be sent sent the whole thing on over and and they're thankful. So that was like sometimes I see stuff I'm like, dude, I gotta help this little baby, you know. Well, so if I just from my vantage point, there is a huge hole for this need. Um and I'm not comfortable filling it. Um, so yeah, if you are, I'm like, let's get you. We can talk. I mean, I think the issue for you is that there's one more chef in the kitchen then. And so again, like operate, it's really just operations management. It almost feels like it should be the brand's job. And if the issue is like, when you add another piece of the puzzle, sometimes what we do is like just a quick back and forth that takes five minutes, but it throws you out of flow state. And so you're no longer creative. You're now doing operations, which yeah. probably isn't what you want to be doing with life. I like oh. it's not. So you need like you need you need the operations person. So, but if I have emails coming in, dink and dunk, dink and dunk, talking about this and that, and it, it takes five to ten minutes on each one. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're another chef in the kitchen, for the record. I don't know if this is helpful for podcasts, but like, we're we're <clears throat> we're like um, I don't know a special dessert chef off to the side. Like, oh yeah, no, you know I, I mean? yeah, like, yeah, but it's still another person. It's another point of contact who has to be inside of the inside of the process flow of things. And the so flow is a far Ben Hartson's last week put up a post, a shout out Ben, that I loved so much because he kind of explained, you know, he said he was kind of bitching about it. I don't I didn't think he was bitching about it. Because this is I remember like, this post. This is what I deal with on a daily basis is there is a uh, it's like a ping pong. Every time something changes on a label, anything changes on a manufacturing side or on the brand side, then it has to come to us. We have to make a, a file change and then we have to make it. There's a proofing stage. So anytime anything happens, it has to go back from start and start over again. So if you want to go by protocol and do things right now, there's only so many times that you can do that and keep file management before stuff starts becoming a, a residual, a diminishing return, because think of it this way, these Labels here have like four different plates on them. If you change one thing, it adjusts four different plates on, on a label. And if you have V1, V2, V3, V4, every time you make one little change, you're changing four other things. Not only that, there's a working file, there's an outline file, with it's the print ready one. There's the PDF you have to send to them to prove. And then usually most people can't always open all PDFs and the PDFs has a, has a tendency to blur some things like embedded images, like uh, barcodes and mm -hmm. things like logos and things that may be an embedded image. So they want a label flat. So that's four, that's five files off on five different layers for something. Now let's say you want to change that parentheses you were talking about. That may affect 20 or 30 different files. And so every time you want to do that now, I have to have somebody on my team go and make a new folder for all those new version changes for that particular little edit. There's only so many times you do that before you're like, oh, well, remember that one on version two? I want to keep that and, do the, and, and, and yeah. bring it back to this one. And then that's really where you see mistakes happen on labels is it's just because they didn't all at once give you everything that needed to go on there. So you only have one or two different looks. It's like we get the, the artwork and the way that it looks down like on one or two, but then we go on to like the eight or nine when it comes to all this like small regulatory stuff. And then there's little mistakes that happen because there's this triangulation. And if you want to come in into the system, now you're adding, you know, another peg and it becomes a box now. And every time the ball gets passed, it's 24 hours. Let's just, I mean, right. Uh, so, so that just creates a, a, a new, a longer deadline now, because what if you're traveling on supply side West and you're not going to be able to look at, you're not going to sit down and actually look at it and be able to give a thorough response on, on your, for the next three days. Mm -hmm. So now everyone's thing just got pushed back three days. It's got to come to me. I'm not here. I'm not there, so I'm here. So now it's going to take them three days for me to make the change, mm -hmm. and then I got to send it back to the to the uh, to the co man for them to do their compliance regulatory. But their person's on vacation, you know, and so they're going to come back seven days. You know what I mean? This is when things start becoming tricky because your client is like, print it now, print it now. Why isn't it not print? Or where's my tracking? Like they literally want it today. They just think that I'm going to press a button. And somebody somewhere else is just going to print all their things. It's just going to ship in like six hours. The laser jets is going to start printing. That. <laughs> yes. And that's just like, I, and, I, and Ben had a really great point where it's like, look, no, this takes every time you pass that ball, it's like 24 hours to 72 hours. It very, very quickly becomes something where you thought was going to happen six to 12 weeks, which becomes 20 weeks like that. And if you don't have the money in order to, or the timeline, or if there's something going on in your, your, uh, 
infrastructure of whatever your strategy is, your marketing strategy, you miss the ball. Like that's the brand. But a lot of brands, you know, they rather just fill the orders and just make it up on the back end. Uh, like right. just like one rule of business I'd kind of started to adhere to is like, like companies and, and clients who are willing to do things like, I don't want to say half-ass, but if they're not willing to go relatively full steam on what needs to be done, mm -hmm. there might not be the client for us. No. Um, no. And that's a, a kind of a, uh, like a, a decision you have to eventually make. Yep. I understand, like we talked about calling the herd earlier. Mm -hmm. It can be hard to do that first. I think the funny stuff, some parallels that we've had, it's like, you know, sometimes you have to do the low man work, right? That's just Sometimes there's a lot of body work. Yeah, and that's that okay. That. Yeah. You know, because um, like you guys got go mans and stuff that y'all work with, and sometimes they just got runs for something that they're going to do that they just need help with, and they just need to get it out the door. You helped me put that in perspective. Because yeah. early on, I mean, I, I've always had a great deal of respect for you, but at one point I asked you, like, what are you working with these people? Yeah. Like, this, this, <laughs> like, it's not a good product. It's not good people. They're not doing anything good. Like, why are and, and but part of it is because you try, like like us, you're being very transparent. Like most of the time, it's because the broker who's selling that job also is the broker that's like one of my really big clients, and he just wants me to like help him out and get this thing done so he yeah. can make like a thousand. But <laughs> and, yeah, and, but you're and you're like Ben, like I make labels, like that's not my, that's that's you know, and I and I I, I get it also because like especially like when you're starting out, you can't just go get you know these nice big brands that we're now working with yeah. right so you have to start somewhere yeah but eventually also like to have a well-oiled machine where you're not ever being expected to print in 24 hours like right you want to work with the big guys because those people have supply chain managers and people who understand like, yeah and it's all it, it's all gucci that yeah you can you know they can rack up a, a nice little size invoice and we're not the type of people who are going to try to gouge anyone but like they're they're good for it right we we never like uh you know, intentionally are trying to like make something more expensive. It's always the other way around. Great. Always trying to make it more efficient and make it less costly and higher quality for everyone all the time. But just some things take longer and it's more of a process. Mm -hmm. And that, that all just costs money. So the people that understand that, those are the people I want to work with. Uh, Every time. Give a shout to, to Greg Helton. Kind of someone like in your, well, in our circles, yeah. but like yeah. especially specific to what to you do. Um, he shared a, a, like a meme, like a motivational image, like probably like two and a half years ago, just stuck with me. Uh, pointing out the difference between like clients that when you send them an invoice, they're like, hey, can we, you know, look yeah. at these things? And the clients that you send them an invoice, they're like, thank you, mm. paid. Yeah. Like yeah. there's a clear difference. And I understand people have budgets and things like that. True. But there but there are people that respect your time that you're giving them and your services. And there are people who are going to want to try to nickel and dime me for your services. That's, that's a big issue that I'm having right now. Because like I got a lot of money on invoices right now. I'm trying to collect like a lot. Mike, no, I think this is you're good. No, you're yes. good. <laughs> oh, no, no, I would say it's you, Jason. Voice, not that you oh, pay yeah, him. I think he's gonna make the table. Yes, yeah, I should be. What I realize is that I need to be very, very operationally uh, in there all the time. Mm. Like, I'm writing this massive article right now, and I need to like yes. pull back a little bit because it's uh, operations is huge. Yes. And so, people who are listening need to realize that that is if you're like a meticulous person who's running on inbox zero or whatever, or you like don't miss a thing in an assignment like those types of people are needed out there yeah. um by as you can see like this whole this whole thing is just an operations mess and so yeah anyway, i thought you were saying so, people out there who haven't paid their price wow invoice <laughs> <laughs> hey I'm, you're not getting a video next month no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah no we're, please we're doing, we're doing we have a new to read yeah there but yeah edward Cope needs his food so do you have a fish. person like maybe Maybe you need someone else to take that off your hands. No, okay. I do. Like that's what Christina mostly does, and oh, yeah. she. Like, I mean, bless her heart. Like I, I'm like, this is your job this week is like to hound people and, and make sure it's all linked up in QuickBooks or whatever. And like, yeah, there's all there's, there's that, that, there's that, and then there's there there's like the relationship part of like again, like you're dealing something for your buddy for blah blah blah. They said you were gonna blah blah blah, and then it's like, oh yeah, I mean, I told him I was gonna like credit him like two hours on this, just like credit him so we can like, get, you know, get the invoice paid. And then there's like some people who want to like, you know, sit there and negotiate and have it with it. And I'm just like, look, like I've got these people over here where it's just like whenever the invoice hits, the ACH comes in, like those are our bread and butter or core people. But like then I've got all these other people over here where they're kind of like buddy deals that are kind of attached to all these other bigger deals. But like now I'm having to hunt them up and Christina's have to spend all her time going like, you know, sweet talking people just to get, you know, I'm not talking really big invoices for the, for the most part, but like. 
Yeah, it does become an issue, and then they add up, and then you they do. Up. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. And you're you're looking at your P and L, and you're like, well, there's like six figures out there. Can well, we own and like you know, how much of this am I going to recover? And then then I think about well, I paid for that. Yeah. I paid for that in staff. I paid for that in infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of stuff out there where it's like, I not only did I do your brand, which like at this point, I feel like we have a little bit of, you know, cred. Mm-hmm. But not only are we putting our, our name out on there on that, but I paid for it. In some cases, I pay for the labels too, like buy money on the labels or the business money on the labels. So it's like, at some point you gotta be like, yeah, how, how many people are gonna take you for a ride? And then you have to like sort of call that out. So I think if you were to come back and watch this podcast 10 years from now, you would just like smack yourself across the face. For sure. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah. Just stop working with these people. Like yeah. it's over. Done. Yeah. Like, fire I'm sorry. I'm there. I mean, you can ask Max. I mean, there's, there's, there's been a few, there's been a few. <laughs> yeah, I slow fire fast. One of the things yeah. that uh, I kind of, we were behind you on, at least in terms of my psyche is like having people that work for the work, work for us. Mm. It's, it's still weird to me, honestly, but yeah. um, like, now it puts a lot of things in perspective because like because similar to you like i'll do free work like i want to help people yeah. and stuff um but like now when we have people writing and we have to pay them out like mm-hmm. if, if you're not willing to of delegating and sort of well yeah but, that, but more so like if someone doesn't pay us but our whole team i have cody shooting and editing change of things. we have derek managing the project we have you know, Drew writing the article, it's like three people yep. that they're basically saying, fuck you too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. It's one thing. It's me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm Ben, I'm in the front of the industry. I want to yeah. like, whatever, you know, like I'll, yep. I'll edit my own video. I'll, I don't mind. Cause I want to help and whatever. Yep. But then when you think about that, why do I care so much about these guys this time, but I don't respect my own time. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that's, that's, that's a big thing for me. Like yeah, if we get criticism about pricing and stuff, yeah. like dude, I, we have a whole team. I don't know what to tell you. Like, Derek likes to eat food. Well, it's 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 the multiple amounts. I don't know if I said that last time, but it's for multiple amounts. Yeah. And like it's it's ten people, their spouses, their dogs, their kids. You know, it becomes like not just you and your wife and your kid. It comes. It becomes like fifty living creatures, yeah. and those things all need to pay their bills. And so I got to make sure that you know the people that I'm messing with understand that very very clearly. That like, look, if they spent this time on this, I paid them for that so that they can live. And all I'm asking for is to like, you know, square up. That's and the inverse of this is something that I start to get a little bit more passionate about, which like is where the money thing is a little bit further is that these guys, whatever the cost is, I mean, like, you know, I, your skills are, are extremely valuable and you, I think you ask for a fair amount for them. Yeah. So some people it may sound like a lot whatever no we're basically budget like we're value based yeah you should i mean i I would agree honestly but the the thing that really pisses me off at the end of the day like you know our our hourly rate has gone up over the years because our value's gone up you has gone up all these things um we get paid x amount for a project Mm -hmm. these guys will bitch and moan Mm -hmm. about paying and then they go around uh, they go they take that work and they go make millions of dollars yeah and it's like a really hard pill to swallow that you're like you stayed up all night, right, doing this label. I risked my heart health to take 75 samples for a pre-workout. And <laughs> I gave them my ideas that I've been keeping inside. Yep. Like I gave you, we give you our passion and life force and creative energy, mm-hmm. and you're gonna go build. Mm-hmm. You know, Vitamin Shop's gonna sell 200,000 bottles of it, and I'm gonna get paid for 10 hours of work. I don't think anyone who's making millions of dollars to do it. But, it's, it's always but, it's always everything. It's the ones that are more probable to fit. Just stocks to treat that. Yeah, I've done some launches that have gone big, and I I'm oh yeah, I get to put it on my LinkedIn. Yeah, <laughs> All right, gotcha. You know, they're driving an mm-hmm. AMG, right? It is what it is. It's part of the job. It is. What yeah, it is. that's but that's, like that's to put your, things in perspective. When you're a mercenary, that's what it is. Yes, and yeah. that puts things in perspective. That's you know why I mean? we are. You know, why we do it the way that we do, it, and that why we're pretty yeah. much the same across the board for everybody. Mm-hmm. Is because that's the only way to make it democratic, and like we're trying to elevate everything as a whole, but like that means you kind of got to bring everyone with you, or you got to drop a lot of people off. But the thing is, is there's only so many commands out there, and they're still making everyone's everything. Yeah, and you got to be friends with them, you know, and their sales guys and their sales reps and blah blah blah. So there's a lot of you know other stuff you got to do too, and it's just you know it's a, it's a woman, so it just comes with good and bad. 
I, I'm not bitching about anything because our business has done well. Um, For sure. Uh, it's less than work. It, it feels like it, it may have turned into a little bit of a therapy session, but at the same time, it's um, it, it, it's growing pains and trying to just like it's problem like, solve in, yeah. in yeah. ways that. I mean, it's brought us to like, it's brought us to good people. It's brought us about like, like it, it, well, clearly we're, we're having a great time this week. We're doing like, you know, uh-huh. I don't have no complaints, mm-hmm. but they're all lessons learned. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's things that well, we're, we're, we're taking those L's. We're out there doing those lessons for, for our clients. For other people so we can learn we can get better so you know we can do continue doing for sure and that's like you were saying at the beginning like those are the lessons that the next co- companies will learn from right like um you know i i i charge an hourly for like research right mm-hmm. and the things that i learn on one job mm-hmm. i might use on the next job right, right? like it's, it's, it's cumulative faster. absolutely 100 percent um that was that age-old meme of like you know if you pay me for three hours you're not paying me for the three hours you're paying me for the 30 years right, right? Uh, so you know i i understand absolutely 100 percent. so can i talk a little bit about print on cans i wanted to ask you why monster was able to do that yeah and i want to get into all of it yeah so what monster does that's knockout you see how you see the why not this i'm sorry okay this that is true. completely right. different yeah so I did you notice this, this mike so late um some of these uh, sleeves are you're able to get texture, right? So you think, oh, you must have to use a sleeve to get texture. And now this so printer here mm-hmm. has printed on the can and they have texture on it. Or so in order to get texture on a sleeve, they basically use a clear coat. It's either a spot tactile or sometimes it's called spot doming, but essentially it's just a buildup of gloss that creates this like tactile feeling. It's just gloss. It's so just, they've added to the medium. It's, yeah, it's, it's a se- secondary process. So you do you, you run your print, you run all your colors, and then they put it on a different machine, and then they run the laminate, which is like the top coat. It is, is a, a coat, either it's gloss, it's soft touch, it's matte, and then they run their embellishments. So those are usually done with some sort of clear coat, and the machine applies it in different ways to get you different effects. Like some of it's sandpapery, some of it's t- doming, and then tactiles, and gloss, things like that. And there's different like values of gloss. You know, there's semi-gloss, high gloss, there's like a liquid gloss, and then you can build it up and do different tactiles, and you can even build up your tactiles to different depths. So like, as you get to the edges of some of these, usually you want to taper the, the tactile down so that you don't get any peeling and curling. The label printers that put too much tactile to the edges, if you ever see some of them.
on top of a, a layer that doesn't have the white back priming, and then it creates basically a pass through of that color where you have a certain sheen to it, where when you like rotate the label, you can kind of see light refract off that. And you can dynamically change that between like 20% all the way up to like 100% white opacity, depending on what we select it at. The more white that goes behind it, the more color that's gonna, like more vibrancy it's gonna have, but the less of that sheen it's gonna have. Now that's just white plate layering. Then they print the ink on top of that, that's the artwork layer. Then they put a laminate. So the laminate is usually some sort of flood or, or it's the laminate is like a sticker coating that goes on top of that layer that creates a protective layer, but also you can make it soft touch, matte, gloss, you know. And let's say you walk into a CVS, most of them are either gonna be full, like a, just a matte laminate or just a gloss laminate. So either it's matted or it's gloss, that's the laminate that goes on top of it. Then they take that off and they put it on a whole other machine and that's when they run the additional embellishments. And usually that's some sort of clear coating. And then this machine can do a lot of different things where it uses technically a spot clear coat to create a, a feature. So in this case, it's spot sandpaper. Wait, are we, is it, it's not on the can at this point. It's, it's on a- It's not on a can. It's on a label. It's on a giant roll. Multiple Perfect. machines. It's on a giant roll that is like the size of me. Wow. So that's yeah. what it starts off as. And then it rolls on this machine. And then as it's rolling, it then gets cut by a die in order to be. So for cans, they have right. an additional step. They have something called tubing, which makes it, creates it into a shrink. All right. I have a question. Before I ask the question, I want to say that we previously had a request to, to go to uh, McDowell and talk about all this. Yeah. And 100% uh, we need to go do a thing that we're talking about this. I think that this would be really cool. Yeah, but some of their stuff is pretty tight knit IP. So there's only okay. so much you can show and do. But if you ever get a chance to sit down with John McDowell, yeah, he, he's probably one of the most impressive for people. That Marcus has been very helpful and he, he really wants to make that happen. Um, so just to confirm for me. So for instance, I'm looking at this, um, and by the way, and where I was going to edit this so we can put all these plates, pictures and everything up on the video. So yeah, whatever all this, like, to... you guys have all of the, yeah. yeah. So like that's not a problem. In space. Um, so I wonder if you're listening to this. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. So on the back of this can, right, there's this whole watermark going on, yeah. right? And there are embellishments on that. So explain to me, this watermark is printed below the laminate in terms of graphically. Over it. In that case, it's over. <laughs> because this is the embellishments that are shining. Like the, this, so that's what, what makes just, it so freaking smart. Because let me, let me say like, I, you feel it, but you also yeah. see it. So these, you're telling me that this watermark is is the clear coat that's laminated on top. Wait, you see the part that's glossy? That was, that's just the laminate of the gloss can. We're talking about the, the legendary energy area of ghost energy, right? Not at all. I'm talking like about the background. This background. Oh, the back. Oh, so, okay. Sorry, you, the Swedish dish wouldn't be a good example. Right. Yeah. Okay. See, you have different. Uh, but like the ghost, the typical ghost can that has this. Uh, I always call it the watermark. This graffiti esque oh. thing. Oh. So all of these like matte words and graphics. That's really all just clear coat on there, or is yes. is there? There's no color difference in the background. It's so they print a gradient, right? So it's the color gradient, and then on top of it goes a. Uh, first of all, that's printed on a. Then it gets glossed, and so that's what all the the, the see the background part of it, like the negative space. Yes. Yeah. stretch that when it goes it glues up that's why it's super technical uh -huh. because like if they didn't design it that specific way and if let's say yeah. the doming right here if they put this doming like up here or down here on the back side close to the uh yeah close to the seam it wouldn't work well, that's so why that is, that's why energy up here does not have that right yeah plus it's just a part of the brand i like to do so back. an artist who wants to just go full art mode some of them need to like dial them back be like no we can't 
Yes. We can't Photoshop that much stuff or whatever. Design that. Much I have stuff that problem in. all the time. Yeah, where they're kind of want to go crazy, and it's just like, like well, that's not good. Well, the cans are different because this we're, we're literally just trying to figure this out. Like they've already done all this yeah. hard work and figured it out. I'm basically trying to reverse engineer to figure out. My, so yeah. sorry, Dan. You know I love you for that. Uh, but my, like, my point of asking though is like the effectiveness is that you think that all of this is. I mean, graphically, it's not, experience, it, it looks like it's the background, but it's not. It's actually the most prominent thing. It's embellishment. It's it's creative. It doesn't have the art. I, I live on, on the file, I, I color it pink. It's like bright yeah. pink magenta. And then I name the swatch, whatever the embellishment is, so that the printer knows that's the technology being added. Mm -hmm. You can't always show that to a customer because they don't understand that there's a technical. This is literally a clear cut. It's literally invisible. I always just thought there was a graphic below that embellishment. In the certain cases, there are. In this case, right here, there is. Like, right. Okay. So it just depends. It all depends. It's just, it just wild to me, though, that like the below. Here's that, a better example. A that's a better example of it. But again, this is not. None of this is behind it. Behind it. Yeah. It's just yellow. Yeah. And there's also the case that because right? it's a like, lexicographic print, you only have so many inks that you can use. But it, it's just funny to me. It just to me, I would think that there's something behind there, but it's it's all. I'm not sure. It's all plating. Smoke and mirrors, perception. As an ingredient guy who just likes good flavors, like this stuff just, it blows my mind that people spend this much time and energy doing this. We, uh, like not to be well, that's, 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 that's the branding different... part. That's the branding part. That, well, yeah. that, that's the, I want it in four weeks, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> that, right? and that's the people don't understand. Yeah. Uh, we have to get, get Mike some pictures of uh, the, the plates, like uh, the, the layers that you guys do. Because I, I, I used to. Yeah. I used to manage people that would do that. Okay. So, and on can, it's completely different, you know, because they just knock out to the substrate here. But in order to keep going back to how do they get texture, that's completely different. That's literally an ink. There's a specialized ink additive, and when it runs through the machine and it gets heated up, it creates the bubbles. So I'm holding. So yeah. That's why. Yeah. We're going for like, you know, a couple hundred bucks. So you don't want that way. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how a way to bring that down to where it's a little bit more economical for, for like people. Yeah. Just on the sleeves though. Like if you want to go print on can, like if you want to like to go print on can, they literally told me you better be ordering in the millions. Yeah. That's millions right. in the millions if you want the cool stuff. They can always do ink on can, like this small Alani one. Not that sophisticated, but like the Monster Energy Drink one, ultra sophisticated. A lot, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of volume has to go into making that make sense. Why they're the kings. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of kings. Cool. So this, I would be yesterday, Mike looked at me, he's like, what are we going to talk to TK about? I was like, don't worry. I, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I was just going to say, yeah. So what are we naming this? This, this, this is like, this is like some sort of like how to make an energy drink. Energy drink camp. Like this is, we'll come up with something. Frontier. Yeah, I, was, I mean, I, I we want to do can we want to do energy drinks, we want to do functional foods, and we've started doing bigger brands with both of those in the past couple months. Mm -hmm. I can't show them yet. Yeah. Um, functional foods like functional beyond foods. protein bars, yeah, cool. Like, okay. like, 
you know, we're trying to like completely recreate sort of that whole section. You know, think of like the little Debbie aisle. Like, what if that whole thing was functional? Yeah. Like, that's the so many ideas. Josh yeah. Shaw is like sweating. Well, I mean, that's where <laughs> honestly, that's where the money's at. They yeah. Like yeah. Long term, um, and that's also where a lot of uh, prestige is uh, from our standpoint, because like. There's nothing better than being able to go to your local, you know, grocery spot and see your work on the shelf. Whereas, like some of these places, I got to like really go find more. You got to cool. order it online. But like, there's some stuff now when I walk into my local grocery store, I'm seeing my logos and I'm seeing my work that's just awesome. pop up, and like that's that's way cooler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, and also like I think people don't realize like it's you know we go to the Arnold in Olympia, it's cool and stuff. But like when you go to like was IFT and like like real food expos, like big. Oh yeah, yeah. like that's like yeah. yeah. Their different. budgets are bigger. Their timelines are bigger. Their yeah. due diligence is more. It's just a. It's a. You know, right now I'm kind of a big fish in a small pond, and I'm not even that big of a fish. And I never seen. Yeah. So that's where I'm like, we're gonna outgrow it. And really, I, I want to get all these this protocol stuff and all the process and procedural stuff. I want to make all my mistakes now. So when we go into that, you know, new territory, like we have things like way more doubtable. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, it's funny, like we just go with like a handshake uh, partnership and everything. But I think like when we get back, we should like actually sit down and talk about all those protocols and stuff. Because I think mm -hmm. I'm ready to, to do some of that stuff. I think that's really exciting. Yeah, I mean, we're working on two things that are going to, I mean, they're going to hit, they're going to hit globally, like everywhere. And like, it's going to completely change our trajectory. And like, that's when you got to make sure things are right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. after that, we're not going to be doing, well, you know, Arnold's and Olympia's anymore. We're going to be doing Expo West and things like that. Let's mm -hmm. be our target. Expo West. We gotta do the Arnold, but we also gotta do the Expo West. It's gonna be two weeks. Literally back to back. Yeah, usually the back to back. So we just gonna have to do we it. Have to bite the bullet, fly <laughs> business plan. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Like, it is what it is. Come on, rally the jet, Mike. Rally the jet. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Nope>, wrong business <laughs> model to that. But. Hey, I mean, we start getting uh, big food yeah. <laughs> sponsors. I mean, yeah. it'd be possible. Awesome. Well, hey, it GK, is. Yeah, it's it like is. nine, eight forty-five. So yeah. I know you have a booth to get to. I'm super. Uh, excited for you. Yeah. Um, or say I'm super proud of you, man. This has been really cool. Uh, it was only a couple of years ago that we were driving around uh, Houston, Texas, like yeah. talking about like what we wanted to do. So yeah. this is I'm, I'm super proud of you. Excited for Barbecue you know. with tacos. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, same as last time. How to find you? Where's your best? At Future Media on Instagram, TikTok. We just redid our website, futuremedia.co. Shout out Max, he did it for us. Mm -hmm. Did that just happen? Mm -hmm. Okay. It was, I want to say like, 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 I want to say like, like six months ago, someone it was said that, to me like, yeah. well, how is Future Media a brand builder? And this is their site. Like, yeah. so <laughs> it was cool. all off. It was all, I literally just made that so I can come to Supply Side West because you need a website. And I live made it in my test. So you guys do website, that's what you're saying. Uh, I try not to because it's just a pain in the ass. Um, but yeah. Yeah, if we can. But for a buddy deal. Yeah. <laughs> buddy deal. Can you do it for me, too? Yeah. If you do the identity system and the packaging, yeah, it's like, let's do the website, too, because we can do the photo shoot and we can do all that. But that's the thing is, it's a whole thing when you bring it into, and it becomes like a, a 12 month project. Yeah. You know, all about the website becoming a whole thing. Yeah. So, so yeah. if you got the money and the time to do a 12 month project with us, bring it on. But most people, you know, they don't understand why that type of scope that big. And know that they're going to probably spend like well over six figures with us. But if you want to come to that conversation like now and then, yeah, that's eventually where we want to be. Oh, yeah. 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 Awesome. Really, TK realizes I was trying to talk to him that hard, but he did it for the site. I mean, all this WordPress is completely different. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we do storage. For sure. We do storage. Yeah. You know? so we, like, yeah. The framework is completely different. Yeah. You, yeah. Gotta, you want to be good at Shopify. Yeah. So that's what's, yeah, that's going to be your bread and butter for yeah. sure. But we, we should definitely talk about like doing some sort of brand for Price Plow. Yeah, we need brand therapy. We need yeah. an evolution. We do. Um, it's time. I think. Uh, I know we've always joked about like a rebrand and a rename. I don't. I don't. I don't everyone keeps saying like you could do the rename. I don't think I want. I don't think we want to. I think it's kind of funny. I don't think we need the rename, but I'd maybe just do a rebrand a little bit. Yeah. I yeah, the skull so. logo and everything. It's it's tough with. We should say the first after episode. If we do like if we do brand therapy, maybe we should. Yeah. We should record it and yeah. record it. And, and anything that's very very like. You know, we'll censor some stuff maybe, but let's just. I was just talking like, because originally I was on board with getting rid of the skull. And like, as we got more into it, I'm like, no, when we sit down with the ingredient companies, they like that we aren't the ingredient person. Like, I, yeah. we have yeah. we have a foot into sports nutrition, we have a foot into the consumers. Right. And that's an edge to it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say toss it all away. I'd say, let's just refine what you got and make it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. The words that we were like an evolution. It's not yeah. like, you know, it's, 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 it's moving up. Yeah. I mean, for a while, like I wanted to like 
not escape, but sports nutrition, you never fully escape, but like, yeah, yeah awesome. move beyond it. But all, everyone sees sports nutrition as like the cool thing, the, the leading edge thing. And it is. So it's like, wait, yeah, I'm, we should like go. I'm willing to lean into the cool edge. Exactly. Not, you know, we don't need to be, uh, you know, insert edgy brand name here. Well, what y'all are doing, like in the political spectrum and stuff, you guys, it's just time to kind of like yep, no. st strap on more of like the more professionalism and stuff. I think y'all are there. Let's, okay, let's say that for another episode and do some brand therapy. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And Thanks then so people much. get to see what brand therapy is like too. Yeah, and we'll I think that, that could example. be useful for you as well, like just to like to put out to people, like, hey, this is how it works. Everyone we do, they they text me like an hour later, like, dude, that was awesome. Like we did not expect that, and now we just are they're coming in with like a whole new perspective and we're really excited to work on this now and it's just like yeah we gotta do sit down we're just talking about sweet it. Yeah. why therapy yeah. well tk thanks for coming to our wonderful airbnb here right. yeah i thanks, hope guys. you have a great show man thanks yeah. audience awesome yeah thank you okay. Okay.